love with TCL. Get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Reckless speculation. Reckless speculation. Reckless speculation. Trade talk. Juicy rumors. That's right. Purple Daily, no Mackie today. Zolgad, executive producer extraordinaire, Declan Goff, and we have some reckless speculation to which we actually threw it out to you, the listeners, to speculate on and to weigh in with your opinion. We also have uh, one of these today. I want a mock. Mock! And because it's Friday, we are going to work in some of your questions as well to conclude Purple Daily. But before we do anything, Declan Goff. That's right. Before we get into reckless speculation, before we mock, before we get into any questions, I want to know what you're going to be getting into this weekend. Well, well, that's a little, you know, PG-13, but I, I will be getting into some... You can some, keep it um, simple. I will be getting some Corona hard seltzer like I do every weekend because Corona hard seltzer is the only hard seltzer made... With, uh, with Pure Beach Vibes, with a refreshing splash of fruit flavors such as tropical lime, mango, cherry, and blackberry lime. Corona Hard Seltzer is a tasty spike sparkling water with a splash of natural fruit flavor that allows you to enjoy the moment. In each can, Corona Hard Seltzer has zero carbs, zero sugar, 90 calories, and is gluten-free. Relax responsibly. Corona Hard Seltzer spike sparkling water with natural flavors imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. It sounds like a very solid choice, Declan. It is. It's very very solid, solid choice. Hydrated. Nothing wrong comes from it, you know. Nothing like anything. As not bad as long ever. as you're responsible. I, I am responsible. If you're responsible, nothing bad. Have you ever known me not to be responsible? Yes, absolutely. But not, uh, but not when it comes to enjoying a Corona Hard Seltzer. True. Speaking of um, responsible. Speaking of weekend d- decisions. No oh boy. Let's start today's show off with this one. Okay. okay? Yep. So we, we have talked about, and I think we discussed this on Monday. Um, Doogie has reported that he has heard that Anthony Barr. Mm -hmm. has been approached about a restructure of his contract. The Vikings linebacker, who I think played in one full game and then got hurt in game two uh, with a, what, he tore his triceps last year and missed the rest of of the season or biceps. And long story short, um, Barr has said that he doesn't want to restructure. And we have talked extensively about the need for the Vikings, who I think right now are uh, 5 million over the projected salary cap, to cut cap space to restructure contracts. And two of the players that we've talked about the most are Anthony Barr and left tackle Riley Reef. Both are considered to be important players. Uh, both would have to be replaced, especially in Reef's case, by a player who knew what he was doing. So you can't just say, well, he's gone too bad. That, that's your left tackle and a big part of the blindside protection for Kirk Cousins. And Barr, basically behind the scenes at least, is considered to be extremely important because of how he helps out and knows things and creates problems, although they might not always be seen statistically in the Vikings defense. And so the question that I threw out on Twitter and one uh, so far we have 1,239 votes is if the Vikings can keep only one of these two players because of their 2021 salary cap hit and neither agrees to a restructure, who do you retain? Okay. The voting so far, again, it's 1,000 plus votes. Riley Reef, people are were at um, 62% say that they would elect to keep Reef. 38% say that they would elect to keep Barr. And now Reef, we don't know on a restructure or not yet. Um, I just keep going back to the fact that the Vikings, after the Ngakwe trade uh, before last season started, about a week before I think the regular season kicked off, that the Vikings came to Reef and said, you can be cut and go find a job elsewhere where it's going to be very difficult at that time to find a job. Or you could take our restructured 2020 deal, which is uh, going to give you, I think it was around a $6 million pay cut. Now, Reef had a good year. The Vikings came back, and because he missed um, the last game in the season against Detroit, the Vikings came back and gave him a $1 million bonus for time played that he failed to earn because he didn't play. That was a goodwill gesture. I'm yeah. not quite. I'm not quite sure, Declan Goff, that that gesture will make Reef say, "You know what? I really appreciate the six mil that you took away from me before the start of last year." That's right. So I'm not sure exactly how that conversation has or will play out when it happens. But do you agree that if you had a choice and you had to either trade and or cut, 
bar or reef that you would keep reef for 2021? Yeah, I, I would um, for two reasons. Number one, I think the offensive line is already pretty fluid and removing a cog from that log is, uh, for the lack of better words, is going to be more problematic for the Vikings line because then you're sliding Ezra Cleveland over most likely to the left tackles, but which he's played before. But I mean, the jury's still out if he can play it at an NFL level, uh, only being a rookie. Then you're also looking at probably adding another rookie. And is it going to be a Garrett Bradbury situation or is it going to be a situation where it's still a slow learn because he, you're jumping from the college pros right to the NFL? That's a big ask from a lineman. I also look at it as, all right, both these guys in 2020, 2021, excuse me, are basically making the same amount of money. Like literally Anthony Barr is making 15, Riley Reeves making 14.9 on their cap numbers for 2021. The cap hits are almost identical. So they're basically identical. So, yes, so would you rather have the offensive line? Would you rather have the linebacker? Also taking the fact that this is going to be Reeves if he plays under it, of course. And, we're, and that's the premise of this conversation. Reef is a free agent after 2021. Right, uh, Anthony Barr is still on your books for, I believe, three more seasons. Now, in 2022, if you wanted to, um, you could cut Anthony Barr for $5 million and save 10 against your cap, which would be pretty decent. Or I can just ignore all the dead money and keep Riley Reef for 2021, figure out a way to trade Anthony Barr to get out of that contract, and I think that's a win-win-win. Um, because, look, Anthony Barr might be a more analytical darling player and, and he does a lot of things that you might not see on the sack totals and on the tackle totals. That's what we're told. And that's what we're told. And I, I'll, I'll take people's word for that because I, I'm not going to pretend to know oh, go that ahead. kind of stuff. Go ahead I'm not pretend. going to go ahead and pretend. Um, but I think Riley reef is more important to the 2021 Viking success, even though he's a bit older than Anthony Barr and plays a less sexier position. I, I think it's... It's an it, important position, It's though. an important one. Left tackle's huge. I mean, if, look, people say we're we're down on Kirk, but at the same time, I don't want to get him absolutely killed uh, uh, from from opposing defensive lines next year. So, yeah, I'd rather keep Riley Reef than Anthony Barr. All right, let's go in, into what the um, possible, if they make these moves, what the possible ramifications would be on them immediately now. So, Reef, to your point, is due a cap hit if he keeps his current contract with the Vikings, $14.95 million. Um, if you let him go, if he leaves, the dead cash for you that, that would count against your cap is only $3.2 million, and you save eleven point seven five. So that's pretty substantial, okay? Barr is a $15 million cap hit on the roster. His 2021 dead cash, if he gets let, let go, is a still pretty high 7.8, and you saved 7.3 on the 2021 cap as opposed to, as I said, with Reef, 11.8. So there is a case to be made here as far as the savings go that that if Reef tells you to buzz off, that it makes more sense uh, to cut him than Barr if he also tells you to get lost. But you bring up an interesting point, and this is what I don't know, and this is what I would love to get enlightened on, okay? Okay. Because from, so if I'm Rob Brzezinski, the Vikings cap guy, and I'm faced with this, I'm probably telling them the loss of reef is a big deal. And I'm not saying it's not, uh, but as far as clearing room off the books, the reef, jettisoning reef is preferable to bar just because of savings. But where I think it's worth delving into and what we, what we don't know, but what I'm going to uh, take a guess on is this part of it. Zimmer and Spielman, all right? So when they sit down to discuss this, purely from a football standpoint of the importance of the players, Riley Reef is Kirk's blindside protector, a veteran going into the last year of his contract. But if he tells you, I'm not going to take a pay cut and I'm going to, you, you screwed me last year, so I'm coming back and not doing you any favors this year. If you're Spielman, I think you still think it's left tackle. This is our quarterback. We're paying him a ton. Uh, he, he's certainly been durable, but you are looking at tempting fate unless you've got a left tackle solution. You are looking at tempting fate because your left guard in Dakota Dozier has to be replaced too. Mm -hmm. So now it's on. It's a big problem. That would probably be my standpoint or that would probably be my end of the conversation. I think Zimmer's end of the conversation is going to, and this is the unfortunate thing, and this is where it sort of goes sideways. 
don't you think he's going to say, yeah, that's all true, but our defense was terrible. I'm known first and foremost as a defensive guy, and I know what Anthony Barr does, and I need him to be successful. And yes, I'm all for protecting Kirk, but my concern, and this is the problem with Zim, my concern is defense. I would love to know the dynamics of that discussion because I think it would be so intriguing to hear because my guess is, Dex, yep. that, that there are, are two forces pulling apart here. One is the GM who signed the quarterback and who probably fully understands the absolute importance of offense in today's game. And the second is a coach who was hired back in 2014 to put together as good a defense as possible and is good at that. But I don't know now what um, seven years after the fact that he would budge on his feelings about, you know what? You're probably right on reef. So I do. I think that's the fly in the ointment hmm. is that part. And then the question becomes this. So if you decided that Barr had to go, but you didn't, but you thought that you could get something for him, what do you think that you could get for Barr? Do you do you think it could be as high as a third round pick? Because I think the one a little bit more palatable to everybody involved is if you trade him, still take those cap hits, but clear him off the books. Yeah. But at least you get a return as opposed to just a straight release. I think. I think you could probably get a second or a third round pick for him. A second would probably be awesome. Dude, um, I would jump. I would be all over a second round pick. Yeah. I also believe oh, that oh. Um, Anthony Barr is essentially, you know, he's <laughs> he's like Zimmer's baby. You know, like yeah, he, he's, he's his he, first draft pick he's ever. His first draft pick. There's a sentimental uh, value to him. Obviously, this whole, the way he left, um, almost left for the Jets and then like had this emotional episode of like, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm not going to try to put myself in Anthony Barr's shoes there. And I'm sure Mike Zimmer was very happy to hear that his baby was coming back to him. But Mike, at the end of the day, like this is the NFL and you've already seen guys like Xavier Rhodes walk. You've seen Mackenzie Alexander come and go. You, Trey Waynes has come and gone. You know, a Everson Griffin's off to other things going on. You're going to lose players. And I understand that's going to be difficult for you being the defensive guru that you are and wanting to mold Anthony Barr and, and also him trying to stay healthy. The guy has battled injuries its entire career. You know, at, at the end of the day, one of your best availabilities abilities is your availability. Mm -hmm. And he played in two games last year. He's always played in double-digit games, but he just seems to get hurt at inopportune times. I, I just have trepidations giving this much money to a linebacker, and I can save, if I cut Anthony Barr, I can use that money and use not all of it, to get back Eric Wilson. And I know Eric Wilson got a little exposed towards the second half of last year. I don't think like you, you don't lock in Eric Wilson to a five-year deal. I'm not saying give the same contract to Anthony Barr you would for a younger Eric Wilson, but you can use some of that money that you're going to save to retain Eric Wilson. I don't think Eric Wilson, he can go out and, and, and listen to the open market. By all means, do it, dude. You're a free agent. But I also believe he'd be better suited taking a more team-friendlier deal in the same system, knowing what, knowing what his role is. It'd be more beneficial for him and the Vikings to get Wilson back on a cheaper deal than paying overpaying Anthony Barr at fifteen million dollars a season. He dropped off too. I I don't think that he's. I don't think Wilson has the value right now that, that he probably had six games into his tenure of playing. So I think there's something to be said for that. Now the problem with what Zimmer is going to say to Rick, if you bring up the entire conversation that we just ran through, is he's going to say, "Yeah, you know what, Rick, I did lose Rhodes and I lost Waynes and McKenzie and Griffin, and guess what? My defense stunk. My defense. So, are you really going going to make me lose Bar? But I think if you can go to Zimmer and say that we could get a third round pick, I don't think you're going to get a second. But if you can go to Zimmer and say that you're going to get a third round pick, I think it at least becomes more of a discussion point." But Mike is going to, I guarantee you, Mike is stubborn. Mike is going, going to use the fall off of the Vikings defense from 2020 to 21 to try and politic to save guys now. And that's where we get back into the entire discussion of how do you want your team to be built? But the thing is, if you expect anything from Kirk, you can't piecemeal the left side of your line no. together. He's going to get strip sacked eight times. Like it's that. But again, but the coach, you know, the coach does not think like that. So. Um, that's at my Twitter account, by the way, at, uh, Jay Zolged, that you can find that. And the question is, or the question is, 
if the Vikings can only keep one of the two players because of their 2021 salary cap hit and neither agrees to re- restructure, who do you retain? Right now, it's Riley Reef, 62.2%, and Anthony Barr at 37.8%. I want to mock! Mock! Beautiful, because we have a big one. Is this a 3.0? Is this a 3.0? From Kuiper? No. Kuiper was a, was Kuiper 2.0 on Tuesday? I think so. Uh, this is McShay predictions for all 32 first round picks heading into NFL free agency. And if I am not mistaken, we are sitting right now on McShay 3.0. Oh my goodness. With trades. With Everyone's trades? doing trades now. Oh, ESPN. Welcome to 2021. Everybody's doing trades. So let's run through the top picks and then eventually make our way down to what the Minnesota Vikings are going to do. Okay. Okay. Todd McShay, Jacksonville. Go ahead. Say it. Uh, oh, uh, Tre- Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Sorry. New York Jets, number two. Go ahead. Say it. it. Guessing Zach Wilson. Yeah. Yep. The BYU kid everywhere. The BYU now. kid. Every uh at number three, it gets interesting because we have we have a trade. Okay. Made with the Miami Dolphins on the clock. In that trade, Carolina, according to McShay in the headline here that's written, jumps the QB line. Oh, wow. So we've got Carolina going from what would be the eight pick to the third pick. Uh, and this pick comes from the Dolphins, of course, through the Texans. And I, by, by the way, I think that in reality, I would not be surprised if we see a Deshaun Watson trade around the draft. And if this pick actually goes back to the Texans, it's the Texans pick. Uh, it went to the Dolphins. And now, according to McShay, it's going to go to the Carolina Panthers. And they're going to take Justin Fields. Wow. Wowzer. That's an interesting one. Interesting. It gets more intriguing. Because at number four, and was it Kuiper who, who had this? Or was it Draft Blaster? I don't even recall now. But Phil read this a couple days ago. At number four, the Atlanta Falcons take Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Wow. So Trey Lance... Or 2.0. Started 17 games in college going fourth. I, I just I can't get my head around yeah, that. I one. can't. I, I don't get it, man. I mean, you would have to you would have to be so sure of yourself. Right. That's a fourth pick. I know. Well, like even and know, look, I get quarterbacks are tough to judge. I get all that, but 17 college starts. Yeah, that's that's not what was Trubisky? So, and, like I think only thirteen. Okay, I think only started That's one year. That's the type of stuff that just scares right. me. I mean, even you know Sam Bradford started three games his last year of eligibility, but you know he had a body of work of twenty eight starts before that, and he was Sam Bradford. I like there, how you put was, that. You know exactly Sam Bradford. Exactly. All right. So after Trey Lance at number four going to the Atlanta Falcons, we actually have I think this is pretty much the consensus of all mock drafts now. Cincinnati Bengals at number five. The Bengals take Panay Sewell, the offensive tackle at, from Oregon. Joe Burrow is going to be well protected. I sort, you know what? I sort of like how this is. If this shakes out this way for the Bengals, because Burrow, I really like him. Yep. And if you could put the offensive line in front of him that they appeared to be building there, it's impressive. At number six, the Philadelphia Eagles take tight end your guy out of Florida, Kyle Pitts. I like it. Kyle Pitts is going to be a baller, man. So he goes uh, six, seven. The Detroit Lions take. Uh, LSU wide receiver Jamar Chase. Uh, eight, the Dolphins getting the pick that uh, McShay traded to Carolina. So the Dolphins are now picking eighth. They take Devontae Smith, the wide receiver from Bama. And then at number nine, I take you to this pick because it's a trade between the Broncos and the 49ers. And the Niners acquire the ninth pick to take a quarterback. Uh-huh. This is the... So, so the two things about mock drafts that are beginning to intrigue me, and it's a little bit of a tightrope because it's dangerous, are Trey Lance for sure. Trey Lance fourth really intrigues me because it scares me. At number nine, McShay has this trade. So the pick goes Denver to San Francisco. Mac Jones, quarterback Alabama, going mm. ninth. Again, I don't know about this one, man. Yeah, I don't get that. You have Drew Locke. What, why, why drafting Mac Jones? Oh, stop with Drew Locke. I don't know. Stop with your Drew Locke love. I, come on. What's wrong but, Mac, but is, is Mac Jones like... No. He, he now has, he's now has his name in the same sentence with Tom Brady, which confused... Like, I like Mac Jones, what? and he might be good. I don't know. But is he a top 10 quarterback? No, nope, he is not. 
I don't understand that one bit. So the one guy that I'm a little bit concerned about, but I think that I would take in the top five is Justin Fields, okay? Like, I'm not positive he's going to be a great pro, but I think I would take that chance, okay? Yeah. And But outside of, outside of Trevor Lawrence, outside of Zach Wilson and Justin Fields as top 10 picks, Trey Lance and Mac Jones. Mm -mm. Next. I feel like I'm missing something here. I don't like it. Number 10, the Dallas Cowboys. And I think, again, this has become sort of a consensus pick. Cornerback Patrick Sertain the second. His dad was a good player from yeah, Bama. He was. Uh, the 11th pick, another wide receiver from Bama, Jalen Waddell, who has been mocked, I think, in various drafts to the Vikings. Uh, and then let's skip to the 14th pick, where the Minnesota Vikings... Mike Zimmer is celebrating right now, and you won't be surprised. Okay. The Minnesota Vikings take Payne, the defensive end. Quitty Pay. Quitty Pay, the defensive end from Michigan. Quitty Pay. I want a mock. Mock. I like Quitty Pay. We did a Dex reviews over Quitty Pay. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind Quitty Pay. I I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind that. He, I think he has to be built name. up a little bit. He he reminds me a little bit of Daniil Hunter in the fact of I, I think he there's an athletic freak inside of there that's obviously noted, but I think there might be something. Yeah, he has to be coached up a little bit before mm -hmm. to get to get really unlock the full potential. But yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be upset if it was Quitty Pay. I think that that's honestly might be the odds-on favorite for the Vikings to take him or Rousseau. Todd McShay writes, it has been nearly a decade since the last time that the first 13 teams all passed on pass rushers. Seattle took Bruce Irvin at number 15 in 2012, but the Vikings are seeking more impact uh, players on the edge. And while pay hasn't necessarily piled on production stats at Michigan, eight and a half sacks over his past 16 games, he can slip blocks and has some power. The Vikings, 23 sacks were the fifth fewest last season. So Quiddy Pay, Quiddy Pay all right. at number 14 in McShay's 3.0 from Michigan to the Vikings. All right, sir. Let's wrap up the show with uh, some comments from our viewers yep. and listeners as we go into to the weekend in which you're going to be drinking Corona Hard Seltzers. Oh, I will be. What do we got? Also, before I get into these uh, comment uh, comments from our YouTube comment section, I just want to remind our listeners that March is pick your prize month here at Score North. So, it's the weekend right now, but starting on Monday, so Monday, March 8th, every day between March 8th and March 26th, one person wins 100 bones. That's a lot of Corona Hard Seltzer, 100 bucks. That's a lot to do a Every lot person with. can get, you can, yeah, you can get multiple packs of Corona Hard Seltzers or do whatever you want with that money, but every day between March 8th and March 26th, one person will win $100 from us here at Score North, mm -hmm. and then that person who wins, so every day when we give away 100 bucks, that person is then entered into another raffle and they can win a $10,000 prize pack from one of our nine partners. A $10,000 prize pack. Did you say ten grand? $10,000 prize pack. That's a nice, nice chunk of so, stuff. So, you can, so there's, a, there's a bunch of things up for grabs here, and it's very easy to do. Also, it's right below in our YouTube comments section. So you don't even have to go anywhere. I have the link for you. Did you just point Executive down? Executive producer. I have I'm pointing, I'm directing <laughs> you <laughs> what to do. I am ridiculous. I am I'm something else. This I is really bothering am. me right this now. This is this is offensive game coordinator. Don't you be pointing there? It's a family show. Quality control coach right now. It's right below in our comments. Open the Score North app, register, enter the pick your prize contest through the listening rewards link in the app. You can register daily. Again, a hundred dollars between March 8th and 26th. And then you if you win that hundred bucks each day, you are entered into a drawing for a $10,000 prize pack again right below in the YouTube comment sections. Don't don't take the pointing down to anything else. If you're I watching wasn't. this, I apologize for I my wasn't. sports, son. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm a little bit embarrassed right now. Right. Okay, let's get to the comments. So Michael wants to know, Yeah, do we believe Kirk Cousins is a franchise quarterback? Judd, do you think he's a franchise quarterback? I'm going to ask you and Michael a follow-up question <laughs> off of that. What do you consider to be a franchise quarterback? QB as I think of them. No, he's not. He's not even close. He is an upper echelon. Um, I think he is a very solid. If I was to right now rank the quarterbacks in this league, I would put him at, at about 12. And I think that's him. I consider a franchise quarterback to be a top five guy. Like there's not a lot. They're like ace pitchers. Yep. Not every team has one. That there doesn't, are. that doesn't mean that Maeda and Brios aren't good. But they're not aces. Like they're not true aces. They're they're not guys that you say give them the ball and watch them spin their mm -hmm. magic. Right? 
So right. I would I say it. that Kirk Cousins is an upper echelon type of, he is about 12 on most days. He could put up really good statistics. But when I think of franchise, I think of Wilson. I think of Rodgers, Brady in his prime for sure. Um, Watson. Watson. Yeah. yeah. I, I think of guys I that you. I think of guys that I could definitive, definitively put at some point in time in a top five. Kirk Cousins has never, ever, ever landed in a top five list. Yeah, it's I think he's a very, very good quarterback and he knocks in the door of being a franchise quarterback. But like what does franchise mean? I guess that's yeah, my I question. I mean the definition of franchise is a star player in a team. Yeah, he's not Kirk Cousins a star player no, in a team. No, it's not I a star. would not. He's good, but he's not a star right. player. Next question from Ben. Ben wants to know, if an anonymous, an anonymous poll asks all current Vikings players if they like their current quarterback, <laughs> yes or no, what would the results be? An anonymous so you, poll. So there's 53 yeah. guys on the roster. Yeah. It's anonymous. I would probably, you know what? I, I know we're I critical of Kirk. No, no, no. I don't, I don't think this isn't spicy. In my opinion, it's not spicy. I, I would say 75% of the locker room believes in Kirk. I would say 75% of the Vikings players, if it's a yes or no, do you... Like, is do, this the question, can he... Do they think that he can win, or do they just like him? If they like him. Oh, I think it'd be lower than that. I think it's... I, th I, I think it's... Uh, I think it's 75% they would. I think I really if you do. ask flat out and they didn't have to be held accountable for their response, I think it's about 60-40. Interesting. I think it's about 60-40. 60-40 like, that they don't like him? No, that they do. That they do. But I think for, I think if you ask, do you like him, which to me implies, can he lead? Can he, do you trust him implicitly? Um, like if you, if you did, and this does not mean that he was a great guy, but if you did the same poll with Favre, <laughs> it's probably 95 Ninety-nine percent, right? Right. Because he's just Brett Favre. You're like, ah, it's Brett Favre. Yeah, he makes some dumb plays, but he's Brett Favre. Kirk Cousins does not have the same cachet to him. I'd say it's sixty forty, like still, but I think that there would be forty percent that's like, yeah, not really. Uh, two couple more here. Mike wants to know, and we talked talked about this a little bit earlier in the podcast, but will Anthony Barr be gone? Percentage chance Anthony Barr is gone. So I think there's more going on behind the scenes than we know. So what Rick said in his in his media availability was that on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Don't buy it. Like pay pay no attention to what Rick said, which was basically, oh yeah, he's coming back. Um, I'm not. I think they're trying to trade him. I think they're trying to shop him. I think they would trade him if they could. I do not think they'll release him because I think they want something back. The question then becomes, can they trade him? Um, I'm going to say I think he is back, but I think that they are working on seeing if they can do something with him. I think he's gone. I personally think he's gone. I think he's played a good last guess. snap as a Viking. I it's really a good do. guess. I don't think they release him. Okay. I, I don't. I think that they feel his value is too high to just uh, turn him loose, but I also believe that they are trying to probably get some draft picks, mm -hmm. and if they can make a trade to get a well, Dex, if if to your point, they could get a second round pick, heart, heartbeat. But I think they take a third rounder for him. All right, last one here. It's an off the wall one. Matthew wants to know: Is Declan turning the camera off and moving out of the out of the frame to snort lines? Question mark. I get it. Uh, Matthew, number one, no, I don't do drugs. That's that's inappropriate. I would not. Um, if I turned off this camera, it would be Corona Heart Seltzer. It would be to crack a Corona Heart Which Seltzer. We got, I have no problem with. They uh, sponsor of the show. We love them. To take you behind the scenes of why that sometimes happens, it does happen. I use a GoPro here. So I even I'll, I'll, look, look at this little pan shot here. I use this little GoPro. It stops sometimes, and it stops. And Judd and Phil have a laptop. They use their own webcam. We have configured the audio that we use the radio board here to feed into it. So they're actually muted on their own laptops and it's picking up the sound through our radio board. So I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of this is going right over a lot of people's heads, but at the same time, this GoPro um, and my, my visual on the screen controls Judd and Phil's audio and visual on the screen. So when I turn off the camera, if I remember, that would mean then Judd and Phil wouldn't be able to hear anything. So when you always are looking at the random guy who's just standing there and so squinting a lot, doing yeah, this, I'm, I'm all good. It's uh, it, it's because number one, I have to be on the screen because I deliver excellent takes and I contribute to the show. Number two, You're executive producer. If what? I'm not on the screen, you won't be able to hear uh, Judd and Phil. 
So and sometimes yeah, the camera freezes. Usually There's gonna on, be a bunch of people who are like, yeah, that's great. Can't hear Judd and Phil. So uh, actually, maybe that is. Maybe I'll start doing that. But when we're on vent line, that's a different story. When we're all at home, different story. When we're here in the studio. Uh, I have to be on the screen because I am literally dictating all the audio and visuals. So that that is why. So no, a, a long winded answer of no. I'm not doing drugs. Reckless speculation. Even though. Reckless speculation. Even though an executive producer has the rights and now the income to do those, no, I don't. I don't do those, Matthew. That's no, I don't. That's inappropriate. Reckless speculation. Great job. But I appreciate the question. Rumors. Appreciate the question, my friend. Matthew going to the ultimate place of reckless speculation. <laughs> does Declan do coke during the show? Think about it. Think about it. Like, like we have gone to trade rumors, free agency. <laughs> now we have listeners crossing o- over to basically is Studio Fifty Four oh in your building. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I don't. I, no, 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 no. All right, respect with, it though. With that, we're we're done. Uh, Phil's going to be back on Monday. Have a great weekend, uh, Purple Daily. You can find all of the time, of course. We're doing it on a daily basis and have been now for uh, months. There will be another show on Saturday as well. So this is can, the Saturday show, actually. Oh, this is the this Saturday, is the Saturday show. show. Ah, and then we did the Friday show and then tomorrow, yesterday. Okay. As you're watching this, Ventline will come back. We'll have three listeners on. Oh, yeah, that's right. We'll probably talk some more Riley Reef Tony Reale talking. Yeah, Tony yeah. Reale. Right, Tony Reale. Is there a piece of paper? I don't even have. Dang it! I, I need to get the piece of paper to throw at the camera, but I don't. I don't have that. You do one of these. Yeah. You do a Hit little it, bit of this. Hit it. <laughs>